Hello guys, today I am gonna talk about basics of solar cell. Based on the material used, solar cell is of two types. One is inorganic solar cell and the other is organic solar cell. If we see the physical design of a solar cell, then there is a, a small hexagonal safety unit. This is the basic unit of solar cell, we call it cell. Now a, num now a number of cells are joined together to make a module and a number of modules makes an array which are commercially available in the market. Based on the crystal structure, solar cells can be divided in three types. Number one, single crystal. This is made by using only a single crystal of the material. This is the most efficient solar cell. But there are some drawbacks. Because of the single crystal, its size is limited and also it is the costliest among the all types of solar cell. So if we have to use a larger cell, then we can use either polycrystalline or amorphous type of solar cell. Now if we see the cell, now if we see the structure of a solar cell, then it is made by using N type and P type of silicon materials joined together. The far end together. The far end of the P type silicon is connected with a metallic plate that works as anode and is called back electrode. On the other hand, N type silicon is also connected with the metallic plate that works as a cathode and is known as front electrode. The upper part of this cell is coated with anti reflecting coating so as to increase the absorption capability. When when we connect the two terminals of this solar cell, then in the absence of proper light, there will be no any current. But as soon as we keep this cell under sunlight, there is bond breaking inside the solar cell which generates a large number of electrons and hole pairs. These electrons and hole will get accelerated towards cathode and anode respectively. And current starts flowing. We can use this current to charge a DC battery for the storage purpose. There are mainly four characteristics of solar cell we should know about. Number one, open circuit voltage VOC. Number two, short circuit current ISC. Number three, fill factor. And number four is power conversion efficiency. Now let's take a look at the VI characteristics of solar cell. Whenever there is not sufficient light, solar cell will work as a normal diode. The current flowing at this time cell. Whenever there is not sufficient light, solar cell will work as a normal diode. The current flowing at this time is called dark current. As soon as we focus sunlight on it, a large number of carriers gets generated and they increase the magnitude of current by a large amount. This increased value of current flows through load. The graph cuts this graph cuts the current axis at ISC and the voltage axis at VOC. If we fit a rectangle inside this graph then the rectangle corresponding to maximum area will give the points corresponding to maximum power that is IMP and VMP. Now if we take out the graph in the fourth quadrant and invert this then, then it will somewhat look like this. Now if we draw a rectangle by taking ISC and VOC as its corner points and name it Rect1, 
and if we name the rectangle inside the graph as rect2 then the ratio of area of rect2 and area of rect1 will give us the fill factor and it will be equal to IMP into VMP divided by ISC into VOC the value of maximum power would be equal to P max equal to IMP into VMP so if we see the value for maximum efficiency then it will be equal to PMP divided by P in and from the above two equations we can deduce that the value of this maximum efficiency will be equal to fill factor into VOC into ISC divided by P in now we will see what would be the value of P in we can get the value of P in from a standard solar spectrum a standard solar spectrum is nothing but a graph between sun power and wavelength if we take sun power in watt per centimeter square on y axis and wavelength in nanometer in on x axis then the graph will look like something like this this is the graph obtained in a space where there will be no any air molecules or particle so this is called amo means air mass zero there will be no any air molecules but if we take the case of our atmosphere then there will be so much distortions due to absorption of light energy from greenhouse gases and reflections from dust particles so there will be so many so much distortions in the graph and this is known as am1 means air molecule and this is known as am1 means air molecules are present here now if we observe closely these patterns then we find that the most of the incident energy lies in the wavelength range of 400 to 700 nanometer means most of the incident nanometer means most of the incident energy comes between the range of the visible spectrum inorganic solar cells are mainly manufactured by the materials like silicon doped semiconductor gallium arsenide or gallium nitride or algan or ingaasp the value of band gap energy of these materials are like for silicon doped semiconductor 1.1 electron volt for gallium arsenide it is 1.43 electron volt for gallium nitride it is 1.7 electron volt for the conduction of the solar photon energy must be greater than the band gap energies of these materials so as to excite the electrons from valence band to conduction band so the solar photon energy ranges from 0 0.5 to 2.9 electron volt now let's discuss about organic solar cell or plastic solar cell now if we see the energy band diagram of an organic solar cell then there are energy distributions like this the lower part is called occupied molecular orbital and the upper part is called unoccupied molecular orbital the highest energy level in the lower part is known as highest occupied molecular orbit orbital means homo and the lowest energy level in the upper part of the energy band is known as lowest unoccupied molecular orbital that is lumo this figure depicts the energy band diagram in a ground state whenever we apply light on solar cell then electrons from homo level jumps to the lumo, lumo level 
and uh, con then conduction starts this gap between lumo level and homo level is known as homo lumo gap 